Paramineralization lies at the core of mud fossil theory and is helpful in explaining the existence of fossilized body parts, but it did not, in my mind, explain the prevalence of the stone organs that I was finding. And while I was sure that some of the rocks I was seeing might be the fragmented remains of other body parts, I was finding no intact skulls, spines, ribs, pelvises, arms, or legs. It was puzzling. And it took a while before I came across information which started to help me form alternative explanations. There are several examples of what may be rapid petrification caused by high mineral content waters. One of them can be found in a popular tourist attraction known as the Wishing Well at Mother Shipton's Cave in England. Because of the high mineral content of the water, Objects remaining exposed to the water for any length of time soon become encased in a mineral shell. People leave objects for a matter of months and later return to find them hardened. While they appear to be stone on the outside, the objects have not yet had their original materials replaced through and through. If such dramatic changes can happen within months, it's not hard to imagine that they would eventually become fully hardened in what would essentially be a blink of an eye by geological standards. This is Lake Natron. The lake takes its name from the natural compound which is comprised of sodium carbonate, baking soda, and volcanic ash. Temperatures at the lake are frequently above 104 degrees Fahrenheit and can reach as high as 140. The environment is highly alkaline, toxic to most creatures, and also provides the perfect conditions for rapid petrification. While it looks like the petrification is instantaneous, you should know that the photographer who took these photos has taken artistic license with the creatures, which despite having hardened outer shells of mineral, were still soft enough to reposition them in the poses seen here. Here is another example of rapid petrification. This cowboy boot was found with a petrified foot and ankle. Some might think this to be a hoax but the preserved internal bone structure has been revealed by elaborate CT scans performed in a hospital. Somehow, I doubt the boot is millions of years old. As you can see, there are a variety of ways in which the petrification process can happen quickly, both artificially and by natural means. Artificial petrification has been brought about in several different ways. Let us not forget the gruesome works of Girolamo Sagato and his techniques for turning flesh to stone, which are still unknown to this day. Petrification can be brought about through exposure to heat and pressure. It can also happen as a result of being submerged in waters with high mineral content, surrounded by mud, or any combination of these conditions. Considering all of these geological anomalies, how could we possibly know the true age of different kinds of rocks and fossils? We've already seen examples of trees growing through multiple layers of strata. Such anomalies cast doubt on the use of strata as an effective tool for dating. But what about the layers of strata themselves? Is there evidence that conflicts with claims that they're formed over tens to hundreds of millions of years? We're here at this cliff on the North Fork of the Toodle River, which shows the very beautifully preserved pyroclastic flow deposits from June 12th, 1980. Late in the evening, about 9 p.m. to midnight, this deposit was formed rapidly during three hours. You can see the effect of the pyroclastic flows. The coarse and the fine material is separated into thin layers called laminae. And the laminated appearance of the pyroclastic flow deposits is really interesting because it shows us that particles can be separated at high speed. These pyroclastic flows were moving at about 100 miles per hour. As the grains were being propelled over the surface in a slurry, the particles separated coarse and fine into thin layers. I had thought that a catastrophe would mix up all the, the particles and make a homogenized deposit. Boy, was I wrong. Right here, a pyroclastic flow moving at freeway speed or higher can separate particles into coarse and fine. So layering doesn't require millions of years, thousands of years, or even hundreds of years. It can form rapidly in this slurry flow process. 
So Mount St. Helens tells us something really interesting about how rapidly strata can form. There's even micro thin lamination in this deposit. It's uh, remarkable. There are a host of different techniques used by geologists for determining the age of things, most of which are not easily understood by the layman. It's important to understand that the science behind each and every one of these techniques has been criticized and the various flaws are well documented. Nevertheless, criticisms of the techniques fall largely on deaf ears, likely because they're often levied by Bible believers assumed to have a vested interest in proving their faith. But just because they're Bible believers doesn't mean their science is wrong. Over the years, I've seen countless examples of poor science and straight up lies from every corner of academia. Nowadays, anytime I hear the claim that all scientists are in agreement or that the science is decided on something, my ears immediately perk up and I begin to question whether someone is trying to pull a fast one.